Hello everybody and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be showing you how to develop your very own black and white film at home. And this is such a cool experience in my opinion that even if you don't have film to develop, you're just watching this for fun, I still suggest you stick around because it is like a magical experience. So without wasting any more time, let's just go ahead and get started. Okay, so let's begin with what I've got in front of me here. I've got one bag of Kodak D76 developer powder two bottles of concentrate, one for the stop bath and one for the fixer, and then one bottle of Kodak Photo Flow. Now, in terms of equipment, we're gonna need this little indoor development bucket. So basically this is a device that's meant for developing film at home. You can open it up. So you put your film on the reels on the inside here. And it's basically like a, I've heard it being described as a light maze essentially, where when you put this in and you screw it in, this is actually now light tight. So when you pour your chemicals in and then you put this lid on, push it on like a paint can on the sides and then do it like this, you can mix it up and basically develop your film in the presence of light. But before we can pour our chemicals, first we need to actually measure them and prepare them. So for that, I'm gonna be using the graduated cylinders I've got in front of me here, as well as a glass stir rod or a magnetic stirring device, a cheap thermometer, some plastic funnels, a couple of pipettes, as well as preferably three of these super cheap like dollar store coffee mug things. Not sure if these are flower pots. I think these are like for flowers. And then this one is for like coffee or whatever. And that's pretty much it. The only other thing you're gonna need is of course, uh, things like safety glasses, preferably an N underscore nine underscore five. I said it like that because of the algorithm. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, that kind of mask or a particular respirator mask like I have here. And that's basically it. And of course, if I didn't mention it or if it wasn't obvious already, you will also need a roll of exposed film. So of course you're gonna need that, but that is pretty much it. So let's go ahead and start preparing our developer solution. And actually quick change of plan. I wanna make sure this video is entertaining to watch. We're gonna start off by loading the film onto the reels. So here's what one of the reels looks like. You can see there was two little BBs here one and two and they're in little grooves so they can't come out and you can see the reel itself is made of two pieces that can move back and forth like that and lastly you'll notice there is these two little like arrow like things now basically what happens is if i demonstrate with this old little roll here where i can take out the end and there's nothing on the film when you go to load the film in the dark because you need to be in the pitch black darkness you need to align these two together with your fingers and then using like a beer bottle opener or something, you open up your actual film canister, take the entire roll out, cut off the leader or like the part that's kind of pointy on the end, and then you load on the film. And those little BBs are actually gonna work together with this action here to sort of ratchet it forward, like ratchet the uh, film forward and wind it in a spiral. So let me get this in a little bend here. And if we, see, it's not aligned. You wanna make sure those are aligned and then put that under and as soon as it goes over those BBs, you can start winding it. Now, I don't have much of this blank film here, but when you have an entire roll, it'll keep going round and around and around, like a spiral all the way to the center. And then once the film has been loaded onto the reel, it is then put back into the container, like that, followed by the top piece, which will make it light tight and allow us to enter back out into the light. So I'm gonna take this back apart, take that film off of the reel here and go ahead and load the actual roll of film. So I will be right back. And I'm back. So I've got the film loaded on the top reel. So I can go ahead and open up this lid and the film will not be exposed to light because the thing is locked. So with our film now locked and loaded, let's go and prepare our chemicals. Okay, film chemistry time. So I've, here I've got the D76 developer in powder form, and you'll notice it says it's enough to make 3.8 liters or one US gallon of developer. However, today I only wanna make one liter. So enough to fill one of these one liter HDPE chemical storage containers. And then if we take a closer look at the illustrations here, you'll see that it says to actually add three liters, stir, and then top up. So in order to make one liter of our solution, of the D76 solution, we're going to need 109.29 grams of this developer powder, added to 789 milliliters of water at 50 to 55 degrees Celsius. And then we top that up to one liter. Okay, so here is 109.29 grams of the D76 powder. So now I'm going to uh, measure out some hot water and fill this up seven times. 
Okay, so I've measured out about 789 milliliters of warm distilled water at about 50 degrees Celsius. And then here I've also measured out the proper amount of the D76 developer powder. Okay, so everything is pretty much entirely dissolved. There are some tiny specks still in the water there, so I'm gonna add a tiny bit more um, just to make sure everything is dissolved, and then we're gonna top it up to the one liter mark. And finally, topped up to the one liter mark now, everything is basically all dissolved. So let's transfer this over to the bottle here. And there we go, that is all of it. And just like that, one liter of D76 developer is ready. So I'm gonna leave this in a warm water bath and we're gonna go ahead and prepare the other two chemicals. So with one liter of developer now ready, it's time to prepare our stop bath. And both the stop bath and the fixer are gonna be pretty quick to prepare because there is no powder to dissolve. So first, beginning with the stop bath, we're going to need about 50 milliliters, five zero of the stop bath concentrate and 950 milliliters of distilled water. Here I have 950 milliliters of water, and then I'm going to use this 50 milliliter graduated cylinder with this pipette to measure out 50 milliliters of the concentrate. So let's go ahead and open this up. It's a brand new bottle. Uh, might need to puncture that. We only need a tiny bit. And add that right into the graduated cylinder. Fifty milliliters of concentrate going into nine fifty milliliters of water. What a nice color. Just gonna give it a little stir and then we're gonna transfer it over to the bottle. All of it. So our stop bath is now also ready. So last up, well, two more left, Fixer and PhotoFlow. And finally, we have our developer, stop bath, and our fixer. So with all the chemicals now ready to go, let's go ahead and start developing. Finally, let's develop some pictures. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this thing up. Okay, so in a second here, I'm going to pour the developer into the tank here, and we're going to begin doing agitations with the lid on for seven minutes and 30 seconds. I've got a stopwatch standing by on my computer beside me, so as soon as we add the developer, I'm going to start that stopwatch. Are you ready? In three, two, one. Oops, didn't click it. There we go. about 500 ml more than enough we only have one roll inside there so now all we're going to do is make sure this thing is on nice and tight okay so once we know it's not going to leak one two three four five, six, and on the stopwatch, I was 10 seconds late, so at 20 seconds, I'm gonna let it rest. And then when it reaches two minutes and 20 seconds, I'm gonna do it again for 10 seconds and do that every minute until the seven minutes and 30 seconds is up.
so the stopwatch is now at six minutes and 40 seconds. The development time is almost done. And that is the seven minute mark. So I'm gonna get this thing ready. And it says to 15 seconds before the time runs out, empty the developer and then follow up with the stop bath. Seven minutes and 20 seconds. So in 10 seconds. So that means now. A few seconds extra shouldn't hurt. Sorry you can't see that. I wish this could uh, face the camera, but unfortunately I can't. I should really get a better setup at some point. Okay, so with all of that developer now out, I'm just gonna quickly do the stop bath before I even pour the developer back in. And then we close the lid, and this time only for 30 seconds. So let's do the fixer now. Fixer is now in, let me set my stopwatch, and stopwatch set. Doing 10 seconds of agitations every minute. Okay, so I'm gonna let that sit for maybe one minute. Okay, and the fixer is now finished too. So let's open this up. And just like that, the fixer is now back in the bottle. And it looks like the next step is to actually wash the film. So I'm gonna open this up and I'm just gonna pour the remainder of my distilled water into here. Now my developer was a bit warm when I did this. Um, so I don't know how that's gonna affect the results. Again, this is a sacrificial film roll that I use. So there's nothing that I really care about on there. So we're gonna do fill with water, five agitations, uh, pour it out, fill it again with water, 10 uh, agitations, pour it out, and then again with 20 agitations. Okay, it's finally time to take the film out. Off camera, I went ahead and did the photo flow. So if I open it up, you'll see it's foamy. So everything is ready to go. So we can go ahead and just open this thing up and let's see if the images came out nice. There we go. So exciting. I hope I didn't ruin ruin them. Okay. okay. Moment of truth. Let's find the beginning. Oh, I see some pictures. I see some pictures. Okay, so I've taken out a little bit. I'm going to use my fingers to... Gently squeegee it off. Okay, let's see what we have.
So the camera can't really focus on it when it's wet, but it seems like we have more pictures of the bridge. So let's take a look at some of these. So yeah, I didn't mess it up. It actually ended up working. So right before we go ahead and start wrapping up the video, I wanted to show you guys a couple of things that I did. Um, so overnight, while the film dried, I went ahead and cut it up and put it into these film sleeves so I can have them for years to come. But the second thing that I want to do right before we end the video is actually try and scan the film without a film scanner. Because I remember a while ago when I first got into film photography, I found this app um, on the App Store. I'll put a link to it. I forgot the name. I think it was called Photo Mine or something. Um, and it's basically supposed to be like a film negative scanner. And I took a screen recording of me using it. So you should be seeing on screen what it looks like in use. So as you can see, it's a pretty simple user interface. What I'm doing is basically putting the film on top of the really bright light and then taking a photo of it and the app is basically automatically identifying where the frame is. And then I can go into the settings there and just define exactly where the borders are. But essentially what I did was put together this very crude light diffuser setup. Um, I separated the actual light diffuser from the lights to help prevent the heat from getting to the actual film. So when I turn the light on, you can see it gets pretty bright. And what I did was basically just hold the films over top of the light and then go over top of it with the app and scan it. So for the results, here's what they look like using the app to make scans using my little makeshift light source. Um, turned out decent, not the best, but pretty good. And I think that's it for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope it was useful if you're trying to develop your own film or if you're just fascinated by the uh, process. I hope it was also entertaining to watch and I will see you in the next one. So if you did like it, please make sure to leave a like and or subscribe. And thank you so much for watching.